Ramble. I was low key pissed because I was like, <laughs> it's my first night in Japan and you're taking me to get Italian? Probably the dumbest thing I've done with my money, other than buying a car and then breaking it a lot and then repairing it too many times. Went to a Red Lobster and I think I spent like $320. Damn, my dude! How? The doctors can like shine a light on the person's butt and, uh, and the tapeworm will like peek out. What? I want to talk about all the people I want to put in prison. Oh. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. That's the tone of my life. It's no November, guys. It's like Gemini season, <laughs> but with three <laughs> times more conspiracies. Helena Bonham Carter, I barely know her. Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk, and I brought some coffee, and I got these little burps going. Don't take Courtney's brain. It's like she's mm -hmm. here. Welcome, everybody, to the Smoshcast. This is a... We've decided this podcast is going to be about... Our favorite places, or places that we hope are our favorite places. Mm. that Places that we haven't been. Uh, places that we have been and places that we haven't been that we want to go to. Okay. Yeah. Travel cast. Travel cast. Travel cast. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to get out there and see other see other people, see other cultures, get, mm -hmm. to, get to understand the world that's outside of your own. And traveling is the best way to do that. If you don't have the money to travel... Wikipedia is there. Read a book. <laughs> yeah. Just read Google, a Google book. Street View. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Real quick, just want to give a shout out to Anchor and Mac Weldon for sponsoring this episode. Also, Noah, I don't. We've never done a podcast together. No, Hi, no. Buddy. Hey, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very good. Good to see you. I didn't get the memo, but that's okay. Hey, no, you did. It's just up there. We took uh, it from you. Okay, mm -hmm. clever boy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. This is this is a never before seen combo on the Smosh Cast. Mm -hmm. Just three old boys. The, the the devil's trio. Are we kind of like a nope, Pokemon Nope, that's evolution? something very different, yes. Damien. <laughs> oh, is that a different thing? <laughs> the devil's trio? Is that actually a thing? What is that? Oh, no. It's over my head. Well, uh, it's got to be, you know be a sex term yeah. if, if he's oh, going yeah. like, whoa. Is a blah, blah, blah. Oh. I think that's what it is. Oh, is usually is? sex terms about that mean like being very dirty, and I mean that is an unclean, like when doing things, you know what mm. I mean? Or maybe it's a devil's triangle. Oh, no, no that's where Amelia Earhart is. It's, it's <laughs> definitely, uh, the Devil's Trio is definitely a sex thing. It's a sex well, okay. <laughs> wasn't, that, wasn't that like a thing that was in like Brett Kavanaugh's, uh, oh my like God. one of his diaries? Oh, my God. And then he said it was a drinking game. Oh, yeah. He's like, it's a drinking game. Oh well, I'll say, clearly <laughs> oh you can randomly say the term and have it mean something else. That's right. That, do you remember like that would always happen in elementary and middle school where you're like, you're like, oh, you know, we got on the swings the other day and then we were swinging backwards and people were like, oh, swinging backwards. Like you would just say a random <laughs> thing and then <laughs> someone so would repeat funny. something their cousin told them. That's like, so funny. Right? Well, we, we, uh, for the Just Dance video that we mm -hmm. did, uh, Mari showed up as a pinata and we're like, Mari, well, it was Matt Rob because we were talking about yeah because oh you were in on this on this bit right yeah I caught on pretty yeah because uh because because <laughs> we were like Mari that's incredibly offensive Japanese pinata you don't know what that means that's so funny. it was much more of like a slow burn though and Matt's like oh I get it Japanese pinata and he sort of let her piece it together where yeah she was she's like, like wait is that a bad what thing? is that a thing and then I just went like. <laughs> Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And then she was like, what? Is that a, what? And so uh, literally until midway through shooting, I was just, and she was oh, just like. Oh, you told her? Yeah, she was like, wow. what is a Japanese piano? Oh. I'm like, all right. So it's like when, when like, okay, so like when Matt Rob wants to mess with his friend. Yeah. And then she was just like, oh God. Ah. You she totally believed suck it. Because I was a victim of that. I'm now the <gasps> only victim that didn't know, I guess, because what? after leaving that conversation with you guys, she was still on it. And she was asking other people what a mm -hmm. Japanese pinata mm -hmm. was. And so it was my <laughs> job to try to figure out what that meant. Mm. And I think I was talking with Olivia and she was like, oh my gosh, like I hate how people are fetishized and stuff like that. Like she's really not about like porn in general, but I guess specifically like Japanese pinata is definitely more offensive than like just a pinata, you know? So we were, we were pretty like not, not happy about it. Wow. But it turns out it's nothing at all. It's, it's nothing not at all. Thing. So now we have to make it. Yes. I, I, I Googled Japanese pinata, nothing showing up. There is it, a, it's just there's a, pinata a sushi. folded like a goose. There's like a sushi points. pinata. It looks kind of cool. The closest uh, they would have is uh, usually like a watermelon. You blindfold yourself, put a watermelon on the ground, take turns whacking at it until it breaks open, and you eat it. Oh. Wow. That's the Japanese Kevin. version of a pinata. Wow. Oh. Kevin, you know a lot about Japan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's... Oh, so yeah, it is, it is called... Devil's Triangle. What did you just? So what is not, this podcast? No, we don't need to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid of the reflection of your glasses of the screen. I'm trying to not look at it yeah. just so I don't get a hint. 
Yeah. You know yeah. what it is? It's uh, it's an appetizer combo at Chili's. It's the Devil's Trio. It's three types of hot cheese. You got a pepper oh. jack, got an aged cheddar, and a mozzarella. And then boneless wings, which we all know are not wings. <laughs> They're rat. They're smaller chicken tenders. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought it was rat. Oh. I don't know. I would, I would try rat if it was at a place where like... You were supposed you know, to eat. That's the, so funny right? what? because that's totally what it is. Like in other cultures, they eat bugs and stuff, and it's like ooh bugs, ooh bugs. Yeah. But like the moment that it's presented in like a little thing where it's like a joke, like try a cricket. All of a sudden, we're willing to buy it. Like if yeah. Chili's just served you rat, it would be totally normal to order rat. I'm not fine with any food that's an accident or a surprise. If there is a <laughs> bug in your other food, not cool. But if they're like, hey, we raise these bugs specifically to do this awesome bug dish, I'd be like, sure, cook it up. Like, same that's with rats, same crazy. with anything. You just landed on literally, I think, a universal, uh, I don't like foods that are an accident or a surprise. And I agree with you. I don't yeah. like yeah. things that gush that I didn't know were gushing. Like yeah. I don't want things like that going on. How did you of all people have the show put it in my mouth? I, because that was I the reason. hate things so much. Oh, I really? hate yeah, so when, much. When Noah, when Noah first started on Smosh, like your, your, half of your cuisine consisted of butter pasta. Butter and noodles. And, and they would ask me like, why don't you put a sauce on there? Do you want a sauce? And I'm like, butter is the sauce. <laughs> and that's, that was like the joke. That's like saying oh, peppers is spicy. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I had a friend that said that they knew some, they knew a guy that um, that said that he couldn't put pepper on things because it was too spicy. Wow! I mean, I just don't like black pepper in general, but it's yeah. certainly not about mm-hmm. the spice level. Um, yeah. So I think the reason the reason why we made put it in my mouth it was because Noah was so averse to any kind of food, mm. and and. Obviously, like I think, I think your acceptance of food as a whole grew uh, after mm-hmm. that show, mm-hmm. and us just forcing you to eat like, yeah, regular yeah. food. I'm I'm a big fan of trying things, like a big fan of like obviously mm-hmm. trying things that are safe. Like I'm not about to be out here and be like, oh heroin. Like I've never <laughs> tried that. Like no, obviously, but things that are normal. There's no middle ground. Yeah. It's like you <laughs> yeah, only eat no. butter pasta. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna introduce you to heroin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Black but on the tar level of, of like trying things that you've never tried, I think you should always do things once, unless it's you know yeah. heroin or. <laughs> Skydiving without a parachute, those are probably the only two. Sure. So I remember the first time um, I ever tried Indian food was actually like mm-hmm. probably the first piece of content we ever did for uh, the second channel at the time, mm, but yeah. it's now Smosh Pit. was me trying Indian food. And do you love it now? No. What? <laughs> no, I know that I don't like See, I'll try things, but I know that I don't like them beforehand. There's certain things that I can't get over. I, I can respect that you're not a fan of it, but I would encourage you to try, like, it's like literally saying, oh, I had American food once. I don't like American food. It's like, well, what did you eat? Like a mm-hmm. burger or mm-hmm. like a new American cuisine? Like, what are we mm-hmm. talking about? Same with Indian food. Like, they're incredible curries, but if you don't like red curry, there's yellow curry that's more like sweet, like korma is so good. Or there are these wonderful breads. And like, the fact that you wouldn't See? like all of it as a genre is just a surprise to me, I'd say. That's cool. Because yeah. I, I don't, know that much. I'm not that yeah, in depth. Okay. So that's, that's actually quite, very interesting. I don't remember quite what we made you eat. I'm guessing we made you eat it like was chicken a, tikka masala, yeah, yeah. maybe some chana masala, mm-hmm. um, maybe some naan. I think there was a type of some chutney. Samosa. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, samosas. I, but the, the general like naan, which is the bread, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that sh- fire. Yeah. I could eat yeah. that all day oh, long. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. It's good stuff. Reminds me of lavash. Yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's very similar. It's like buttery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to live less than a block from uh, this wonderful Indian restaurant in the heart of Miracle Mile, Los Angeles. And they have another, uh, like they have a few more like uh, locations around Los Angeles, but none are as good as this one in Miracle Mile. And I would get it like every other night. And it would get to the point where like they'd know me and they'd be like, hey, Damien. I'd be like, Bilal, how's it going, man? <laughs> like, good to see you. Yeah, you know it. Lamb korma. Thank you very much. Mm. Like, ah. Uh, I miss it so much. That's the rapport. Had lamb korma. That's it's great. good. It's um like a yellow curry. Mm. It's uh like a dash of cream. They use like cashews and raisins to season as well, mm. which I know doesn't sound good right off the bat, but it's like this sweet, savory. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's so good. I get lamb korma. Oh, yeah. Amazing. That sounds good. I'm hungry now. Yeah, me what, too. What type of food do you not like? I was uh, talking about that on stream last night. Mm-hmm. I Someone was like, what is your least favorite food? And I was like, I literally can't think of anything. Mm-hmm. Like, I will try most things. I mean, I've had, like, ratatouilles before that I've been just not a fan of because there wasn't enough texture. It, like, mm-hmm. f- kind of felt grody to it's me. It's just but, a like, stew. Mm-hmm. It just felt kind of, like, stewy. But, like, mm-hmm. 
I don't know. Even Brussels sprouts, I'm like, I've had them in ways that are good. I like everything. Like I've one of my first weeks here, Mythical Chef Josh was like, hey, who wants to try some muffins? And they had made like beet goulash muffins with fish eggs in it as like a joke for a Rhett and Link video. And I took a bite and I was like, hey, that's a pretty good muffin. Like, yeah. I like a lot of things. That's crazy. Yeah. That's I some had... gulag food. That's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, that's rude. That's rude. <laughs> Coming no. from goulash. Sorry, that's that's my grandma's goulash, and I know she wants to. I thought you were gonna say your grandma was in the goulash. No, yeah. no, Whoa. no. She brought some of the recipes back from it, though. <laughs> she uh, definitely was close to it geographically. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's some that's a, tough uh, that's shoulder. That's a prison for everybody. Who's yeah. There. Yeah. <laughs> really sad one. Really not so great. One of the more fun prisons, I would have to say. Oh. <laughs> of all the prisons I've been to, yeah, mm. gulag. The gulag is, you mm-hmm. know, you gotta you gotta try it once. Mm-hmm. You know. Wow. This could be your new show. Put, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Let's put rate Noah prisons. in a gulag. Yeah. We go to the worst Yelp reviewed prison. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so funny. That's uh, unbelievable. Can God. you can you Yelp rate a prison? I, I want to know that. Think yes, so. I think you can. Like a correctional and facility. All the good ones are in like Norway. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they actually are trying to reform their people and be like, here's how you go about life now. And they're like, thanks for the change. And <laughs> yeah. here it's like, how would we like 20 years of free labor for mm-hmm. a minor offense? Mm-hmm. Cool beans. Yeah. And we all just sort of shrug and are like, yeah, that's how it goes. I guess. <laughs> yeah, oops. oops. Yeah, I saw a Swedish prison uh, cell that looked better than than Los most, Angeles, most of the, the Airbnbs I see. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's smart. It's like, oh, okay, like you don't treat the people like they're animals mm-hmm. inside, and mm-hmm. and then maybe they won't come out totally messed up. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, definitely deeper rooted societal things, different shifts. Yeah, also mm-hmm. a lot less people in the prison system in yeah. Sweden. Like, yeah, <laughs> if we were to if we were to give everyone that kind of treatment in, mm-hmm. in America, not, we would need. They're not monetized though. Yeah, well, oh, they're not privatized. They're not privatized, they're not privatized. Yeah. 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 which is essentially yeah. the same thing. Do you think right. California is getting rid of privatized prisons? I think I That's think there's a, yeah. a thing against it, but I think it's opening up new ones. It's something like that. It's like yeah. it's like the the half step to hopefully get the full step. Apparently, a lot of the cheese, the very expensive cheese you get from Whole Foods, is made by prison labor. Really? It's what? Like artisan handcrafted twelve dollar cheese. And it's like yeah, handcrafted by people who got paid a dollar a week. Cheese? Like, yeah. Same with a lot of farm raised fish too. A lot of the like fish farms are in prisons. That's crazy. But they're only in prisons, so it's like hey, you're learning a trade. You get to learn how to farm for fish, and then when you get out, it's like well, there aren't jobs for that. That was all in prison. Attached yeah, to that so. is the idea that uh, I was learned this through fighting the fires in California because mm-hmm. a lot of our firefighters are prisoners. Yes. Um, yeah. Is actually the 13th Amendment, which legalizes slavery um, in prisons, specifically for convicts, it's still legal to have effectively a slave, mm-hmm. um, oh, is it's illegal under the 13th Amendment for any of these people to then get jobs in that industry. So in California, yeah. anyone who just spent, you know, what? five years in order to get a reduced sentence it's... learning how to fight fires on the front line can't become a firefighter. I don't think it's can't impossible, do anything like but that. it's really hard for a, for a felon to get a job as a mm. firefighter, which is which really sucks because we're training we need we're them. training yeah, all it's these specifically people. the fact that there's you know thirty thousand yeah. people that don't have any other skills that would love to be able to do something that are also trained in something we specifically need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's it is kind of funny that like our fires are fought by. A work crew of thousands mm-hmm. of inmates and people who probably are, are not paid a dollar a day. near anywhere that's on fire too. Mm. Like they're <laughs> definitely not from you know Thousand Oaks or you know the Getty Center. <laughs> oh sure, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's really what it is. I mean, I think it's 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 interesting. But yeah, the Thirteenth Amendment. If 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 you guys haven't seen uh, what's is it called the Thirteenth on Netflix? I haven't seen that. It's Ava that's DuVernay doc. Oh, that's it really cool. talks mm. about the Thirteenth Amendment and how. You know, once slavery was abolished, the South was like, oh, but like, what about this? If we mm-hmm. literally if the we, next if, day you could get arrested. Yeah. If they're prisoners, then then we can still work them like slaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, it was a, a fun bit that I was doing yesterday and I was really yelling it in the office. And I don't know if everyone was there. It doesn't matter. Uh, it was on set when we were doing the uh, Just Dance thing mm-hmm. was I was just really making a point about copyright law. And how like we always get copyrighted and demonetized for like mm-hmm. little bits of of anything, and how yeah. it's obviously parody or it's obviously this. And I yeah. thought it was so funny if all YouTubers banded together and literally got like the law changed, copyright law. <laughs> like both, if you the do it in the is, United States, it'd be international. But somehow, yeah. I think that'd be so funny. You could band together all the YouTubers, and they still wouldn't be as big as the record industry. No, no, mm. obviously. But I think in in a way that's yeah. just like it did get I, a little any way that you want to do it. You yeah, know, now it, we don't 
listen to anything by Universal, which is like, okay, how are you going to do that? I'm not sure. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did, it did get a little better. YouTube has in, instituted a slightly better policy mm. where if it's like a five second clip of music, they can't claim an entire your, video. Well, they can't, they can still choose to like take your video down, but they can't, but they can't take the money from it. Okay. Makes sense. So it's mm -hmm. like, they can still say like, Hey, you're using my, you're using my content, which is true. Mm -hmm. It is still copyright infringement, mm -hmm. but they can't be like, Hey, that video that you spent, uh, 30 hours editing um, yeah. all that work you did it doesn't matter you use five seconds You're of our song so that's now. our yeah, money yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't do that anymore and they're wow. punishing people for they're punishing companies that are doing these claiming for making false claims so there were like there were companies that were there to just they benefited from just claiming every possible thing that could slightly be considered mm -hmm. copyright infringement and there was no real punishment for that until now so now they're held accountable. So it is It is better, it is getting better. And let's take a break. Hello, this is Ian, host of the Smoshcast. If you've ever wanted to start your own podcast, you might think you need all kinds of equipment to set it up, and it turns out, no bro, you only need Anchor. Anchor is an all-in-one free tool from Spotify that lets you create your own podcast and get it heard everywhere. With Anchor, you could record, edit, be heard on all listening platforms, and they'll even pair you with sponsors to help you get paid for your show. It all works in your web browser or right from Anchor's mobile app, and best of all, it's totally free. So start your podcast with Anchor today by going to anchor.fm slash smosh. That's anchor.fm slash smosh. My brain just went to four years from now when the future is all subscription-based and the reality that music will be used in YouTube videos is a thing. Everyone knows it and everyone loves it. So now anyone who's you know, featured on one of these big labels, this big label can partner with YouTube can partner with anyone at all and you can pay YouTube nine ninety five a month and you can now use any of this music in any of your videos. Well, they can hope, are, but no, 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 YouTube... that's not a hope. That's a sad future because oh. you should just be able to use their music unless you're just straight up playing the song in a video so that other people can obviously listen to the song without having to pay for a streaming service or, or mm. view it on this person's channel where the song is specifically monetized. Mm. But there's definitely a legal case, in my opinion, because I always want to support the underdog unless I'm the business owner. I've never owned a business, mm -hmm. so I don't take that side. But I'm always like, okay, this is obviously parody or this is obviously being talked over or being right. used in a different way where no one could take the real worth of your product because no one would be using your product through that video, if that makes sense. I do think there has to be a happy medium, though, because even if you are – you know, people aren't going to come to the video just to listen to it, which they're of course not. I agree with you mm -hmm. there. You are still using something that somebody else made mm -hmm. for the benefit of your own channel. I think mm -hmm. there's a happy medium to be reached because otherwise if there's no happy medium there and it just sort of feels like free reign, which I would personally love, but mm -hmm. as you said, I'm not a business owner, mm -hmm. same as you, mm -hmm. the companies are always going to try to find a way of like, how do we snatch this back? And they mm -hmm. usually have to do it with ways that we consider a little unsavory or underhanded, like claiming every possible video. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. until we get an established way to make both parties happy, there's always going to be some screwing over on both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, I, th I think it's perfectly, I think it's perfectly in there, right? If, if you're using... I think parody is a different different story. I agree. If you're parodying a song, mm -hmm. and it's a and it's a critique that involves the song, that's fair use. Mm -hmm. That should never be claimed. Like when when um, Olivia said mozzarella in the tune of Rihanna's umbrella, like, and they claim that, and that's not okay. No, that's mm -hmm. that was absolutely ridiculous. And I kept trying to think of that example too without specifically doing it because I'm like, well, damn, I don't want this yeah, podcast they, they to get claimed claim as no, well. And, and yeah. I think we did get yeah. that. I think we did get that reversed. Mm -hmm. No, we took out that audio. I think that's we took crazy. out that audio. But, so, um, yeah. obviously none of us are lawyers in, in copyright law. Hmm. But can you copyright a speech? I would. I want to copyright specific notes and tones, so mm -hmm. that in the future we all have to speak in C sharp, and uh -huh. that's the only. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, open but that's like really like what it comes down to. Like, yeah. like, can I patent like a formula within my songwriting or my poems or my speeches? Well, I, or, or a method that I use. I mean, there's there's been there's been um, musicians like Marvin Gaye's. Uh, uh, a state sued um, blurred lines. Right? Yeah, yeah, Robin Thicke for using a similar tune, mm -hmm. and that's happened a lot. Like where where uh, an artist has sued 
a different artist for using a similar like tune. It doesn't even have to be an exact rip. You can mm-hmm. just claim like, oh, that was clearly derivative mm-hmm. of my content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that answers your question. No, not really. I just wanted to find my way to gaming the system. <laughs> oh yeah, it's to, been around to just long make a bunch that... of money suing people. Yeah, or or just claim a bunch of things. Well, it's like with Kim Kardashian was making this. I think it was like an underwear line, and she wanted to call it kimono or something like that. She wanted, she to, wanted take to take the word kimono. She wanted to copyright the word kimono, <laughs> and like <laughs> all of Japan's like. Hi. Yeah. Quick question about yeah. about that. Her lawyer's There's, sitting there like, no, but they don't speak English. We're with this yeah. the English phrase kimono. That's not a real word in English. It was literally. I mean, that's that's, that's the, the best only of my understanding. Yeah, that that's the only thing of, that they could say. Yeah. it's like you can say anything when it's you can like, pay a lawyer. No, you can't. <laughs> it's also a brand that. of condoms. Kimono. Mm-hmm. Wow, those sound soft and flowy. They might not get the job done. But... <laughs> today's <laughs> podcast is brought to you. Today's prison cast is brought to you by. <laughs> Kimono. kimono condoms. Kimono. Put it on it's, your dick. It's the only kimono I know. Not not that we have to go there. This can be cut, but I had a, a, a brand of condom recommended to me by a friend. Um and it it's uh it's by it's a Swedish brand. It's called like Lilo Hex or something like that. It's a condom that apparently it's not one big balloon, but it's made by casting together same material essentially, but it's a bunch of casting? hexagons. Yeah, yeah. Tink, Imagine like tink, instead hexagons? of yeah, casting. <laughs> yeah, it's like they've got hexagons connected and that builds the entire condom that looks like a normal condom. Stop using your hands that big. Sorry. We all know that's bullshit. <laughs> Yeah. So like when you got to get into your condom, yeah, you know, you get, and you wrap it around your balls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those that are just listening, I have my hands very wide. As though he's saying the fish was this big. Yeah. That's so funny. But the fish is my balls. Oh, yeah, but this condom apparently can't pop. There's like a video of them like poking it. It can pop because they put a needle through it, but it doesn't pop pop. It yeah. just makes the tiny hole, but it doesn't entirely pop. Mm. Hmm. I don't see how that's better because if you get it a hole towards the top. <laughs> You still got a hole, but so I you just, just don't I'd know share. that it's pop. I just thought I'd share about these condoms. There's kimono po- condoms, and there's also these hexagon condoms. The end. All right. I just learned about them. Um, hey, everyone should look up these hexagon condoms. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of interested. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, totally sponsored by this Swedish condom company. Um, I don't wear in. socks what anymore. Are, what are our highlights those. going to be today? Prison <laughs> reform, the Thirteenth hey, Amendment, guys, and you guys condom are, preference. Yeah. Do you, oh yeah, Lilo Hex. <laughs> there you go. I'm telling you. And there's a video of this guy poking him with a with a pen. And my friend told me about well, him. And I'm like, I'm not gonna. You can hit your wiener with a bat, and you won't even feel it, dude. It protects it. <laughs> oh, this is cool. It's like active armor. <laughs> Graphene inspired structure for thinness and strength. Oh my god. Yeah, that's what it it's is. It's got 350 <laughs> interconnected hexagons that give it structure. Forged and together by a dwarf in Mount Doom. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mithril. Your Mithril ween. My concern my concern is that their advertisement shows the condom just like sticking straight up just on its own. Mm-hmm. Like all we And I'm wondering do. like, does this just like come out of a sheath? And it's just like it just stands upright on its no, own. No, no, it's 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 oh, a normal condom it. and it functions like a normal condom. Okay, so it's just a normal condom. I had a, a cool I had design. one sample. I was I was given a sample. I had a sample one. God, I feel like I shouldn't ask. It was how was it? Could you pop it? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, on the how many pins this is did real. You try to poke I don't know it. what size it was, and I don't know. I felt like I got the pencil variety because I <laughs> it was very difficult to put on, and it was very uncomfortable yeah, it was to leave to put on. It all the way on with the, the, and it's it's I'm no, I'm a normal person, so I felt like I got I got maybe the extra small sample. Uh-huh. For the, but it didn't pop. Didn't pop. <laughs> but you, not, this doesn't sound did. like a glowing review. No, my my experience with it was not. Although I've <laughs> never, you know, I'll keep my next sentence to myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. How good is that sentence we're not hearing? I've got a question for everyone else. Man. Have you ever had a condom that was great? Tra- I did use the kimono. You did? Oh my god! How is that? They're good. Yeah. Is that like sheepskin or something? I mean, it beats having an accidental baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. More or less same sentiment. There's no great one. There are better ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I have no kids. Yeah, okay. Or STDs. Wow. So that's honestly dope. You want to know something fun? Yes. My My oldest brother, apparently a double accident. That's birth control and a condom. Yeah, Oops. I have a friend that was the same way. But maybe it's the parents just lying. They're trying to like cover up for their, their you know, irresponsibility. Be like, oh no, we were responsible. <laughs> you just made me realize what if both my parents were lying to each other? 
each other and they didn't even know. One's like, you're on the pill, right? And he's like, yeah. And the other one's like, it didn't break, did it? And he's like, yeah, it didn't break like that. Or she's and like, you're wearing a condom, key. right? And he was like, y- y- no, yeah. there's, you got it. there's no way that you don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Have you ever, I don't know. Do you, are you aware of the show that was, uh, what's that show called? I didn't know I was pregnant. Yeah. They made an entire television show about women that didn't know that they were pregnant mm-hmm. until they like went into labor. So I've seen a wow. clip of a woman talking about how she thought that she had pressure because she had to go poop <laughs> and that she thought that she went poop. She was like, wow, that was no. such a difficult sh- no, I swear to God. No. Yes. And no, when she looked down, there was a baby. She no. had no idea. Not only did she not know she was pregnant, she thought it was a sh- but it's no, a different, it's a it's different, different canal. No, no, you're misunderstanding. This person obviously has births of <laughs> every day. This person knew no different between their daily bowel movement and birth. There is larger problems here. Yeah, one of those sounds like <laughs> an emergency. The baby in the toilet. Yeah. Oh my like, God. Uh-huh. Now, oh. I don't know how much they, they play those things up, but that's the one that I have seen. I don't know what to say to that. Yeah. Where do we go from here? I that's think the you, craziest thing I've ever heard. I don't know. But my issue is like, hopefully it fell in the water part, you know, because porcelain's pretty hard. Well, look, <laughs> the baby hitting its head on porcelain is just the first in a series of horrible <laughs> things that that's going to happen in yes, that baby's life. Yes. When the mother didn't know she was a pregnant and pooped the baby into a yeah, toilet. Yeah. That's not the only bad thing. I feel yeah. like that's like an urban myth. That can't No, be that's an that's an ad. That's an ad for that show 100%. But, wh- okay, but hold on. Unless I like, dreamed it. Unless I like saw a bit of the is, show and then went to sleep. I believe that they put that on this show. This is reality TV. Mm-hmm. They cast someone to do that. Like mm-hmm. maybe I she hope. actually didn't I know hope. she was pregnant, but for them to be like, what if you like played up the story? Like you really just thought it was a poop. Like <laughs> we all know. Like, was, if it Can was... you imagine like an adult <laughs> walking up to another adult, like the producer walks up, hey, but like what if... What if you thought it was a poop? Hey, can you just play I this up for us? That. Just like just like say it was a poop. That's reality TV <laughs> though. That is reality TV. Yes, but that's just so funny for this woman to be like, okay. Okay. As <laughs> long as I that. get my 45 American dollars at the yeah. end of the day, <laughs> yeah. you get your content, sweetheart. Do you know what else? Uh, sorry, it's equally gross. You know what else also, is cool about condoms? <laughs> no, the, the same type of TV shows are like the ones where I saw like the stories of people that they didn't know they had tapeworms until like they farted once and then like felt something. I watched a lot of these shows as a kid just to like really, I don't know, I'd get grossed out and then I would leave. But this one dude farted out a tapeworm and went to go check on it and saw that it was a tapeworm outside of his body because he was like, oh, did I poop? And then he didn't know what to do, so he got scissors. And I feel like he was at his office or something. Or maybe it was his house and he had scissors. And he cut it as close as he could to his anus so that it would, and it went back up. The part that was left would. I would have tried to pull it out. No, you can't because they're they're literally in your your intestines, they're in the walls. Like the fact that it was already coming out his butt like that is, is like it's already 35 feet long in him. Like that's the situation. And that's why there's a show about it. Yeah, I think that, I think there's a kind where you can like, oh gosh, this is. This is maybe too much, <laughs> but I've heard that there's like sorry man. There's one where like you can like so shine. Sorry. This is shine a, lot. a light on it. Shine a light, like the doctors can like shine a light on the person's butt, and uh, and the tapeworm will like peek out. What? It's a showman. It sees the spotlight and it says, oh "I'm a God. star." It's a little cave <laughs> person. I'm so sorry, y'all. Hold on. No, it's no, a... I can't Google Why are you this. Looking I can't. It up? I can't Google it. Oh, luckily we have no Wi-Fi here. Is that what's going on, or you just don't want to do it? No, I don't want to do it because oh, I know okay. if I if I if I try googling shine a light on a person's butthole to have a tapeworm poke out, um, that's not going to be a lovely Google image search. I like how we were supposed to talk about the places we wanted to go and see. Yeah, oh, I'm so sorry. And the locations. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All the lovely I just, places. I'm imagining in the world. one person like listening the first three minutes just of the podcast. Just talk like, about it. Like, oh yeah, awesome! I can't wait for them to talk about travel. And then like they skip to like they keep skipping by ten minute increments trying yeah. to see when like, the travel is like prison, prison reform. reform is go- type tapeworm shine on the. What's your favorite condom? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the last ten minutes is like I don't know. Belarus sounds cool. Where is that? Eastern Europe? Oh, just in general? Is that like Hungary? Belarus? I don't know yet, no. Oh, damn, I'm so sorry. I was really yeah. curious. I thought you might have gone there. I, no, I've never been to Belarus. We could, we I, could had talk a, about it. I had Romanian food for the first time. Oh, how What is that? that technically? It's It was good. It was. What is it technically? Yeah, what, what do you is mean? like? What is Romanian food? What would? What, what did like, you eat? Uh, yeah. I had like That's a better a, question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what went in your mouth? I had like a really like tasty like chicken stew kind of thing. Mm. It was like chicken and like maybe it was like a tomato base or something like that. 
and it had a uh, polenta in it. Oh, and that was really that good. That sounds really good. Yeah, and then I yeah. had this dumpling that was like the size. It was like it was like a fried ball the size of like a baseball, and inside it was like cheese and like I want to say like celery and carrots and some stuff. That sounds great. It was it was pretty it was pretty bomb, my wow. dude. Where? How did that happen? Where'd you get it? Um, it was it was next to where I, it was near where I get my my haircut and my mm. and this this guy was like yeah it's uh, pretty good and I was like I've never had Romanian food before I don't think I have ever been given the opportunity to heck yeah that's cool yeah I like trying new stuff like that yeah there's a there's a Burmese food place or Myanmar Ooh. food place I don't know what you would consider it. But I don't know what it's called. Is it is it Myanmar say, right now? Is it? It's, well, I think it's Myanmar right yeah. now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it, the, there was like a they had like a fermented tea leaf salad at this Ooh, place. That sounds good, dude. It was it's, fermented it's like, tea leaf. Yeah. yeah, it's like nothing I ever tasted before in my life, and it was amazing. It's it, like solid kombucha is what that <laughs> sounds like. <laughs> well, it was like it, was, it had like uh, it had like some you know your sort of typical salad things like kind of like a lettuce, but then it also had like a lot of like legumes in it. And then it had like little jalapenos in it, and Ooh. it had like the fermented that's always, tea leaf. That's always been surprising to me the amount of jalapenos in East Asian cooking. I mm. always like uh, associated that with like Southwestern American or Latin America. I'm like, oh yeah, jalapenos. But the fact that it is so popular in East yeah. Asian cooking, I'm like, wow. I mean, it could be a different kind of chili. I don't really know. But, it, but it's at least similar. here, like you yeah. get jalapenos on pho, you get jalapenos in Thai cooking. There's yeah. Jalapenos everywhere. Yeah. Like there's jalapenos in sushi now too. So it's just yeah. I don't know. It's it's a good interesting it's a little boy. But yeah, it was it was dope. It was like it was like salty from like the like the legumes, like nuts kind of things, and mm. then it was like it was uh, spicy from the jalapenos, and it was like briny from the fermented tea that leaves. Sounds really good. It was oh man, Yum. It was great. Burmese food. I give that a big old thumbs up. Uh, but I do not want to go to Myanmar right now. I'm I'm gonna no, mm-hmm. not exactly a great place for <laughs> specific group freedom freedom yeah or living if you're a certain if you're one of the you know persecuted ethnic groups uh, but there are crazy. some other places let's take a break yeah yeah let's do it. And our other sponsor is Mac Weldon. Their mission was simple, to make sure all your basics and beyond are smartly designed and shopping for them being easy and convenient. Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants, and more that you will ever wear. They have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means that they eliminate odor, you stinky son of a gun. I'm a fan of Mack Weldon. I mean, it's you're, you're paying a premium. You might as well get something that's quality because quality is always gonna last better. It's gonna give you better experience. If you're gonna be sitting around in it all day, you might as well enjoy it, right? So if all that sounds good to you, you can get 20% off your first order. All you gotta do is visit MacWeldon.com and enter promo code SMOSH. That's MacWeldon.com promo code SMOSH for 20% off your first order. Wow, that's a deal. What places do you guys want to go to? This is going to air while I'm in Japan. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Going back. Be- to Are you going to Shane back? again? No, uh, Shane uh, has Goldbergs and stuff and was mm-hmm. sort of concerned about scheduling. So I'm actually going with Kevin and his wife. Hey, yo. That'll be super um, fun. It's going to be super fun. Last time I went to only Tokyo and there was so much to explore there, um, mm-hmm. you know, barely even scratched the surface. But uh, this time we're going to Osaka first. That's great. Um, and that's like the street food mm-hmm. mecca of Japan. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to try all these different things. I'm going to get off keto a few days before so there's no like weird transitional period. And mm-hmm. then I'm just going to go to town and gain a bunch of weight. Oh, yeah. That's get cool. some takoyaki. Oh, takoyaki. Dang. I'm going to get some uh, okonomiyaki or is it onokomiyaki? Uh, okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki. But you don't want I'm Osaka good. okonomiyaki isn't as good as Hiroshima. What? But that's where yeah. it started out. I've, I've been told. Yeah, it's just not good though. It's, it's yeah, not whole as good. city doesn't have a good one. <laughs> well, no, they might <laughs> try them all. <laughs> no, but nah. the, well, because like the Osaka style okonomiyaki is that really simple like uh, savory pancake where right. it's just like the single like flat thing. Yeah, the Hiroshima style is the one with like all those layers. And oh, all Shane and I had that style in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. They might. I mean, they'll they'll probably they'll definitely have it in Osaka. Fair enough. But. 
go after the Hiroshima style. But dude, I'm gonna try everything. Know, screw it. I want to try literally everything. I'm excited because yeah. I'm a seafood boy. Oh yeah. Um, and I've missed having rice while on keto, and mm. so just the combo of all that is gonna be great. I want to make us a reservation at a fancy tempura restaurant. My treat. Wow. Um, and uh, Ooh, yeah. uh, tonkatsu. Get some tonkatsu. That's uh. Well, do you is it tonkatsu or tonkatsu? No, you're talking tonkatsu though. Like yeah, the actual, fr- uh, it's a fried pork cutlet. Pork cutlet. Yeah. <sighs> Ooh, baby, yeah. Heck yeah, down with that. I, I barely ate sushi when I was in Japan, both times. Dude, I, Shane and I kept going to these uh, conveyor belt sushi places, which, you know, there is sort of lower end, um, but they're all, like, color-coded with the plates. Like, if you grab a green plate, it's a dollar. If you mm-hmm. grab the orange plate, it's a buck fifty or whatever. But we would just go to town and make these stacks of plates, spend 15 bucks total, and it's, like, their lowest-grade stuff is still the best sushi I'd ever had. Incredible, incredible food, and you just try whatever, and you're like, I can't really read that. It looks like it might be sea bream. Oh, well, cut it up. Like, <laughs> what? Did you go to... Uh, I had duck sushi. That was neat. Did you go to a busy... A busy place? A busy was it was it busy the place with the conveyor we belt? We went to a few different conveyor belt places. One of them was very busy. Another one was always just like it was near the train station and yeah. barely had any people in it. And Ooh, you see that that's sketchy. Good. No, because I good, feel like because I feel like you, if you're doing the conveyor belt, you definitely want to go to a spot that is busy because otherwise that stuff is sitting on the conveyor belt for a long time. But and it was you don't fine. Want sushi sitting out. It was fine. It was a dollar for like amazing tuna sushi. And I'm not talking about like the hand rolls or whatever. I'm talking like nice slabs of fish on top of rice and yeah, even if it'd maybe. been sitting there it was still fresher than anything else i'd ever tasted here you know mm. we all tried all sorts of weird stuff so i'm just excited to have another food adventure it's weird that that's food cool. is the thing i'm most excited about when i think about japan right now oh mm-hmm. that's like half of my reason for traveling oh, is yeah. just to eat food like literally just eat food and drink and that's 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 half my travels. I remember when uh, I went last time, the uh, the first night Shane and I were there, we met up with you. Mm. And we were like, all right, what are we going to get? Like, I want to get some good Japanese food. Oh, yeah. And you were like, let's go. I don't know. I'm feeling like let's go get Italian food. And I was low-key pissed because I was like, <laughs> it's my first night in Japan and you're taking me to get Italian? It was, I'll be damned if it wasn't the best Italian food I've ever had in my life. Oh, yeah. my God. It yeah. was incredible. So funny. Was, yeah, Italian food in Japan's bomb. There's just mastery of whatever you want to do, you pursue mastery. Mm-hmm. And so if they want to make a pizza, they're going to find a cool way to make it their own and make it perfect. Mm-hmm. Same with, yeah, I had just amazing like risotto and oh my duck God. and all that stuff. I've was... never had a risotto in my life. And that's one thing that I really want to have. What? You risotto is great. I've never had a risotto. Oh, it's delicious. Never. We Only from watching you... 15 seasons of Hell's Kitchen am I now like obsessed <laughs> with a perfect risotto. Yeah. Really. We need to take you, like, there needed to be one more episode of Put It In My Mouth where we actually treat you to good food. And we're like, what do you want to try? And you're like, I've never had a pear. We should take, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should so take Noah Fine Dining. <laughs> yeah. That should be, the next, that should be See, the next show. what I've done a lot is go places that aren't that nice. So I've done a lot of stupid things with my money for fun because I think it's funny. Probably the dumbest thing I've done with my money other than buying a car and then breaking it a lot and then repairing it too many times. Cake pants? No, cake pants, oh, that's like $15. No, I went to a Red Lobster, and I think I spent like $320. Um, Damn, my dude. How? Well, that that was the statement. I'd never been to a Red Lobster, and the statement was to show up and to order like their surf and turf, all the things that were like super expensive to try to like really, I don't know, just have the full experience of Red Lobster. And it was such trash, like the worst food <laughs> I've ever had, yeah. that I just don't, I, I don't know. I loved Red Lobster as a kid, though. I, I used to do fancy. the like, it's it's... Not like fancy, but as a chain, like I think it is what I, I just saw a show recently, uh, it was uh, called Breakfast, Lunch and Dinner and Lena Waithe was the guest star and she was talking about Red Lobster and how meaningful it was because it made seafood be associated with like fanciness and family mm-hmm. in her mind. And it kind of did the same thing for me. So as a kid for my birthday, I would always be like, I want to go to Red Lobster. Like that was my yeah. fancy That's restaurant. So funny. And since then I've learned that like, you know, it's, it's not necessarily fancy, but it is still... Mm-hmm. I don't know, it's got that air about it for like, if you can't yeah. afford crazy fancy things, Red Lobster is a big deal. Mm-hmm. I think and, also like if if you're living in a place that doesn't have a lot of choices yeah. and, and you have a Red Lobster in town, then yeah, sure. It's like, it's- It's meaningful. You can make, it's like, you can we're make going for seafood it. tonight, kids. Yeah. Oh my God, what did I do? Did I get all A's? Like what happened? What a treat. <laughs> That's um, so funny. Yeah, so I don't blame you for doing that. The best part, I just was really curious of the experience. Personally, yeah. I didn't like the food. Their, their biscuits are what was so good about it. Oh, the, they're ridiculous. The little cheese biscuits. Yeah. No, yeah. Cheddar uh, Bay. That, that's the only reason to still go to Red Lobster. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I'm a big fan of uh, fried clams and how many places can you get a platter that gives you fried shrimp, fried clams, and fried fish? Wow. Hit me up, Red Lobster. 
When, <laughs> when you're here, you're family. I guess that's maybe one place that I wouldn't go again is a Red Lobster. Over, over, I guess, the question of where would I go, I definitely wouldn't go a Red Lobster. If I had to go anywhere, though, I'm trying to think um, around the world. I don't know, but I've heard of this thing called an isolation tank, which sounds fun. Yeah. We were talking about that the other day. I want them to put one in the uh, Smosh cast room. That would be unbelievable. I would never exit it. <laughs> I haven't done into... it. I need to find one. <laughs> we're going to turn into Joe Rogan where we just have an isolation tank and a sauna and an archery range in our office. Is, Is that, that a re- thing? Really? Yeah. Oh my God! You know that's a that's a man that's a person. <laughs> he took over uh, Philip DeFranco's old old office. Is that the, right? Old, the old SourceFed office. Yeah, wow. that's interesting. That's what I heard at least. Um, no. Rumor has it. Never been there. Never never stolen Your things information from his office. broker. Where can I find Joe Rogan? Uh, little Birdie told me. He's, have, uh, have you guys traveled to every continent? No. And I don't mean no, tectonic. Not even continent. close. <laughs> oh, of course you can't go <laughs> Antarctica. What would we be like? Do you mean tectonic or like the <laughs> well, map? Well, there's a lot more if you're going yeah. like tectonically yeah. and not right. just how we drew a map, but yeah. So I haven't traveled to the continent below Europe that they just found, but <laughs> I have. I was born in Europe. I live in North America. I've been to Asia now. Haven't been to Africa. Have not been to South America. Oh, and Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't. Oh, and Australia. Haven't been to Australia. I'm not, I'm not very uh, traveling uh Savvy, savvy. Yeah, yeah the, the like one place I, I've went, I've already going back to. So. Yeah, <laughs> I feel fun. like I feel yeah. like I, could, I should be a little bit more adventurous. I, I I just you know I have I have concerns about safety and stuff. It's, you mm-hmm. know, there, there's, but there's also so many places with... to travel where it is safe. Like, where would you want to go that you're feeling? Oh, it's just not quite safe to go there. I I don't want to make I don't want to make rash judgments on places. So I don't I don't really want to say a specific place because I mean any anywhere. Anywhere in the world is anywhere in the world, you know, save for maybe Syria and a couple other countries, are relatively safe for travel. You might get robbed, mm. but you probably you'll probably be safe. I heard this one this one tip. This guy said that um, I think it was Mexico. He said that cartels will sometimes pay off like people in the airline. Um, you know, maybe a, a, a stewardess or, or somebody that's working the gate, they'll pay for like the manifest mm. and then they'll Google all the names on the manifest. And if there's any important or rich people that show up on that, then they'll go and find the chauffeur that's waiting for them, mm-hmm. tell them to either kick rocks or um, pay them off. And then they'll hold the sign and then the person lands, oh, sees man. the sign, they mm-hmm. get in the car and then they get kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I don't think that's really like, uh, that's not something that any like regular old person should be worrying about. Mm-hmm. If you are a billionaire listening to this podcast. If you're an amazing some... YouTube influencer <laughs> type, like so, Ethan He Rocks. So this, this person Ethan saying, He Rocks. So this person said that they always travel on like a pseudonym. Can you, wait, can Is you that do legal? that? You can't do that on a plane. I wonder like, maybe within the United States? No. No There's way. No way. They you check your ID, ID 17 times. Especially as you go 2020 from... on, you're going to need like certain yeah. biometrics on your ID. They're like, walk through this thing, hold out your ID, but keep your ID in the box and now hold your ID. Like, there's no way. You can have the chauffeur under the pseudonym. So when they go looking for the chauffeur. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, it's the, there you it's go. It's the chauffeur. The chauffeur is under a pseudonym. Su- Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That because makes if, so much Because if he goes there, like, let's say his name is uh, Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I'm just made up name. And he goes there and there's a guy holding a sign that says Bill Gates. He's like, hold the f*** up. I put my name on the show to the car service as Gil Bates. Mm-hmm. That's uh, a trap. Ah, got mm-hmm. it. Kill Bates. Can you imagine? I think that trap is really funny. It made me think of like some sort of like movie, like, you know, mile 22 situation where they got to set up this big CIA trap and Mm. like it all pins on like them holding the person's name and them (laughs) self-identifying. Like that's the whole thing. They're going after Bill Gates. They just have someone at the airport on any day with Bill Gates, just hoping. Just hoping that he lands. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting. That's it. Oh, you want to know a, a fun CIA thing? Sorry, this doesn't matter. All no, day long, I like reading weird things. No, Apparently, go for it. Uh, at one point, they invested in putting microphones on cats um, in order to like put them out in, uh, I think it was when Germany was east and west or whatever the, mm-hmm. the wall was um, around that time so that they could like gather information and put them at different embassies and stuff like that. Wow. And so they surgically were able to put a microphone on a cat, everything, it all went well. And so the CIA guys were like, great, let's test it. But these people work all day long, like in a lab underground, and they don't get the normal world so they released the cat to try to get information on just the general public just, just a small and, tech like, had they did it at like four, no 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 they did it at like 4 p.m the cat literally within a minute left 
They were listening to it in a van and they heard the cat meow, then try to cross the street and then get run oh, over. no. Holy crap. So like they spent years and millions of dollars and they accidentally let it out during like rush hour. I also imagine this they... like <laughs> late 80s, early 90s microphones where it just looks like this and it's just with a string <laughs> tied to a cat's tail. Yeah. Like, go on, normal cat. Don't yeah. mind it's like, Rrr, just trying to drag this heavy well, ass they... microphone. I know yeah. they tried to, I think they, it was the US government, they tried to train dolphins to like deliver bombs. That's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> just knock on like the the submarine hatch, just like <laughs> <laughs> who there? <laughs> ah! That was a normal dolphin. dolphin. <laughs> yeah. Not a bomb dolphin. Uh, boss, it's just a normal English speaking dolphin. Do we <laughs> well, let then it in? Open up the submarine door. <laughs> he can't breathe unless you do. <laughs> Noah, mm-hmm. where do you want to travel? Okay, other than an isolation Because we got like five minutes, so we can actually Oh my gosh, about... I'm so sorry, guys. I hope you guys, guys enjoy I travel always cast. derail things. Where would I want to go? I would want to go places that I guess I know people or can get like a, not a special experience, but like when I went to France, it was nice because I went there to visit uh, the family that my brother was marrying into. The dad is like a very, very well-seasoned chef. <laughs> well-seasoned. Uh, <laughs> along with his food. It was so great. Uh, but in France, it was really funny because uh, there was no really help for disabled people if you were trying to use public transportation. Oh, Everything yeah, yeah. was like, you know, 30 stairs, super steep and oh, like super slippery underground in order to get somewhere and somewhere else. And there were a couple elevators here and there, but they were all turned off. It was kind of funny um, traveling in that place and being like, oh, you couldn't really travel. Like my grandma, she had two knee surgeries. So for her, mm-hmm. it was very difficult, but she's a badass. Like she was getting through it. Hell but yeah. like, it was really like, oh, this place isn't necessarily for you. Um, mm-hmm. to travel here. Other than that, the only places I've been, I went to Sweden when I was a kid. Oh, that's so cool. It was nice. I would like to go there again. Yeah. Um, cause the seasons are so extreme. It's pretty fun to like see how a world is different. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but where would I want to go? I don't really know. I guess, uh, the Redwood Forest was really, really beautiful. Uh, when I went there, like Yosemite and stuff Dude, like that. Dude, that's close. Yeah. That's like a place that I would love to go again. That, Do it. that place was actually just like really, really cool to touch these trees and to know like, wow, these are gigantic and big and the these sequoias. are like babies. Yeah, mm-hmm. the sequoias. Yeah. And they used to be huge, like huge and thick and thousands of years old, some crazy <laughs> And then Paul Bunyan came, you know, and made the Great Lakes with his bowl or whatever happened. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I would love to travel to the Redwoods again. Oh, nice. Well, the Redwoods, the Redwoods are up in, because sequoias oh, are aren't, sequoias aren't the same. not Redwoods? I don't my think entire the life as a California... As a Californian my entire life, I thought they were the same. Sequoia National Park is the, is the redwood, redwood forest, right? Yeah. Maybe they're different trees, though, but they're both in the same place. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I always I thought know. they were the same. Maybe. Yeah. I want to go to, just firing off the list, I want to go to Japan. I want to go to China. I want to go to uh, Germany, France, England, uh, anywhere in the UK, definitely Spain, literally anywhere in Europe. Um, I one day want to go to... Somewhere in the Middle East, whatever happens to be, you know, politically things are changing a lot all the time. So whatever at that time happens to be safest and most um, accessible. Probably Israel. Definitely want to go I'm somewhere just say in Africa. Iran. But, uh, definitely somewhere in Africa. Um, probably like to start with South Africa and then like move up the coast. Want to go to Brazil. I want to go to Peru. I want to spend more time in Canada because I only went there for a very brief time. Like, and also there's so much of America I want to see mm. that I haven't. So. I don't know. I only started traveling really on my own as an adult last year Mm -hmm. because, you know, I was always like very paranoid of money. I was always like saving because I'm like, I can't spend money on anything. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, it might be okay to treat myself to a vacation once every couple of years or something, you Mm -hmm. know, so. I think that's incredibly important. I think so. Yeah. Oh, and Vietnam. I want to go to Vietnam. Um, But back in time, right? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Was that that was not okay? <laughs> Vietnam's beautiful, my friend. If you uh, could travel back in time, where would you want to go? You can only travel back mm, forty-five years. Who who wasn't having some kind of conflict fifty <laughs> years ago? I'm yeah. so sorry. Uh, the moon, the moon, fifty po- years ago. Portugal. I'm assuming Portugal would be fine. Portugal would be dope, and they have amazing food. Oh, I want to go to like I I forget the name of the if it's Basque or if it's I know Basque is the people I'm pretty sure in the language, but I don't know what specifically you'd call the land. The Basque but, region. Basque region of... between France and Spain. I want to mm-hmm. go there. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Got some good food. Yeah, it, I th- I would love to go to Vietnam. Like I think it's my friend. My friend bought a scooter and like drove all through from like the south that's, to the he north. Didn't Holy didn't rent crap. one. He just bought straight he, up. Yeah, bought a I scooter. think it's just cheaper to just buy like a shitty scooter it broke on him a bunch of times okay but i guess you could just like go into a shop and be like hey can you fix this for like this much money and they're like sure uh vietnam would be cool um thailand would be baller thailand would be cool cool to go to something like shanghai do you know what all these places have in common they all love coffee my favorite cup 
I don't know. No. Oh, that, I thought you totally had it. Yeah. I thought you <laughs> no. totally had it. Um, what do they all have in common? Well, um, south of Vietnam and- Oh, uh, French ba- influence? Bangkok and Shanghai. Uh, by 2050, we'll all be underwater, oh, a new projection right. says. Oh. So, well, so will we, <laughs> if we're at the same rate. California will. Uh, nah, we're, we'll be-, we'll be, uh, we'll be the water levels uh, are staying know. over there. So, I, I don't know. When I went to, to Utah really quickly, there's a, a lighthouse that I was told by the, the crew that was in Utah, there's a lighthouse in the middle of the desert where we were in the middle of nowhere. And I was mm. like, why is there a lighthouse? And they said, because that's the coastline when all the ice caps melt. <laughs> well, well, so the funny Whoa. thing is, uh, you remember those like old projections that said how high the sea level would rise? They found out that um, the satellite imagery that they were using was actually incorrect because it was uh, it saw it was seeing trees and mm. it wasn't accounting for the ground, so they did a another. Um, oh my! So it's like fifty feet higher than before because they thought the canopy was the floor. Is that what you're saying? Yikes. Yeah. So they <laughs> they think it's going to be a lot higher. <laughs> oh my god! Uh. So I would say if you guys want to visit some some really great low lying areas, um, see it now while you still can or. Um, you know, look to volunteer in something that uh, goes towards um, climate change. Oh, yeah, we if Team to... Trees is still going on by the time we... Well, I'm you just... want to hear a depressing thing about that? I mean, <sighs> sure. in order to reverse climate change with trees, you would need over, I think it was something like 1.2 trillion more trees than we have right now. Guys, it's it's real. We all know it. It's the end of the podcast. We're all f***ed. We've been f- for a long time. This information that we all like to know has been around since the 80s. It's been around publicly since the 80s. Even before that, it was researched by companies. The Shell Corporation, the one that destroyed the Amazon, so many other things they've known since the 70s, exactly what the uh, air would look like today from uh, uh, their projection for, I think it was 2016, was anywhere from 415 to 420 parts per million of greenhouse gases, whatever the the way that we measure it is. And we were at like 418 in 2018. Mm. So they've known the... Dr- literally the direct projections it's been going exactly how we've known for a very long time and they've purposefully evaded the law and paid people off they should all go to prison i love both of you and thank you so much for having me here i would love to travel to um oh Bangkok. we still have 15 minutes i thought you oh, were we still raising have 15 fi- minutes oh it's not the end okay great yeah i mean that was a pretty good oh. sign off and now i'm pretty I thought, sad like, 10 so. minutes ago you raised your hand like this showing like we had five minutes <laughs> you know what the it was, it was lunch they're balls. pulling lunch, and I said five. How many Perfect. months are the bulls? Are five oh, okay. I wouldn't have, well, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have rapid fired my list like that. Well, I want to talk fine. about all the things. Can I, I want to talk I about talk all the about... people I want to put in prison. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry, guys. That's the tone of my five. life. It's <laughs> November, guys. No trip. So it's, sorry. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like it's like Gemini season, but with. Three times more conspiracies. I don't know. See, that's not a conspiracy, though. That's what sucks, is that's not even fake. Well, it is a conspiracy. Oh, it is. It's a, a, okay, not in the way that it's meant to be discredited. It's an active conspiracy, yes. There's the concept of conspiracy, and then there's conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. Like, people can conspire. Conspiring is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's what happened. Well, you can still have a conspiracy theory about something that could eventually then be proven as being true. But there is certainly the connotation of, like, all the birds died in 1986 due to Reagan killing them and replacing them (laughs) with course. And Hannah Montana is really Miley Cyrus. No, that one's one's been disproven. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! It was just a, a mental Duff, disorder. Dude. Wow! Yeah. Holy crap! That's where she went. Hannah Montana is Hillary Duff. Let the rain and, fall down. Mm. Yeah, and also, <laughs> Hillary Duff controls the weather. Mm. Wow! She's a government agent. Are yeah. you kidding? Have you ever me? seen Hillary Duff and the weather in the same place? Yeah, I haven't. Have well, you ever seen it rain around her? Yes, every rain? time. Exactly. Because she controls the weather. That's why she's got mm. that cloud above her. Exactly. Man, see, I'm just see, laughing at this part. <laughs> yeah, I want to visit the NSA headquarters. They don't have Windows. Well, really, they all use Mac. So. That's cool. I don't know. I'm just talking shit now. I'm making a joke on myself. I want to go to Alaska. Okay, that'd be cool. When it's not covered in mosquitoes, I think. Mm. Oh, what's the deal with that right now? Is, is it mosquitoes is it... or flies? I don't know what it is, but it's like, with the weather. It's just during mm. yeah when it heats up a little bit. We, oh, we, melting we, still yeah, water. We, we sure. work with are actually mm-hmm. from Alaska. Yeah, two enough. people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Wait, who's the second? 
Jackie and Greg. Really? Jackie? Wow. She's yeah, from yeah. Alaska? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started to talk to Jackie the other day. I randomly brought up the Iditarod, forgetting, and that's a dog sled race in Alaska, forgetting that she was from Alaska. And then when I said it, there was just like this silence and she just sort of stared. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's like this dog sled racing thing. And then she just chuckles and is like, yeah, I know it'll, it is. I'm from Alaska. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot. And she was like, <laughs> my uncle raced in it. And I'm like, damn, I'm a double idiot. But to be fair, like, <laughs> there was total silence when I brought it up. It was mm-hmm. like, Iditarod. Oh, Oh, it's a race, you know. It yeah, was, you yeah, literally like, mans. You, you, yeah, you Alaska explain something. Yeah, you yeah. mansplain her culture. <laughs> I hate mansplaining, but that's like blah 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 business and science. Oh, sorry, sweetheart, business and science is blah. That's mansplaining. But when you bring up a concept and someone just stares at you for a solid six or seven seconds, and then you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I should clarify. That's just normal splaining, right? Maybe whatever you said just wasn't interesting. She just didn't respond. That's yeah. very possible, man. Yeah, that's pretty funny. I'm. I'm I'm like you, I, I definitely over explain. Yeah. That's like where my brain is always. I feel like I always get stuck in this trap of like, just with people in general, I'll say a thing and if I don't go into more detail, people are like, I don't know at all what that is. What are you talking about? But then if I say the thing and think like, ah, I learned from last time. People don't know what this is. And I start to say, oh, it's this thing. People go, oh, yeah, I know what that thing is. Mm -hmm. And it's never, I'm never right. Mm -hmm. I'm always an ass. You should take a vow of silence. I would love to. I w- should just do that. I don't know. If Smosh keeps employing me, that's what said what if, Whoa, whoa. What if we, this entire time, right now, conspiracy theory, Smosh has been Millie Vanillying the entire time. We don't talk. It's someone else VOing Shane us. Shane is just in the background The whole time the he's doing curtain. all of our voices. Ba, each ba, one. Ba, 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 How crazy would yeah. that be? They, oh my God, new conspiracy theory. Let's deep fake a new group of YouTubers. Okay. We'll call them Team 11. <laughs> yeah. And we'll all look like Millie Bobby Brown. We'll call them Zoosh. Nobody, nobody's taking that name. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last night you were trying to start a new company, Zoosh. <laughs> like, no, it's already been made. Out. That was that was the uh, that was the channel that Logan and Jake Paul started. Oh my! Was it really Zoosh? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> back back in the day. That's so funny. They, yeah, they 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 tried to do sketch comedy when they were little kids. Mm-hmm. I feel like it I haven't cute. heard. It was, of, it was adorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I haven't heard of any travesties coming from those two recently. I feel like they're cooking something. They're cooking. Well, okay. uh, Logan's fighting KSI again. Oh, neat. well. There's also one other thing. Apparently, crap. Now I don't know if it's in a music video or in a TV show. It's one of the two. But there's, I think they have a TV show coming out, and in the in the pilot episode of whatever they're doing, there was a joke about filming a dead guy. There's something like that that someone was oh, talking. Dope. About. I'm glad See, they can laugh I'm the about worst. it. Now. I'm the worst. I'm Twitter personified. I don't know anything about it, but this one time I heard someone else say something that was like yeah. he filmed a dead body, and so now everyone don't don't like him. With that being said, I'm sure he's fine. Yeah, no, they'll be doing fine forever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, places I want to go. <laughs> I think I feel like we just don't want to talk about it Ooh, today. I want to go to Logan Paul's or Jake Paul's bank. I want to go into their bank vault. I imagine banks have vaults for rich people, kind of like Harry Potter. Like Scrooge you know what McDuck I mean? like diving Scrooge into McDuck. the coins that would clearly yeah. break his bones. Uh huh. Yeah. Or like Mr. Krabs. <gasps> That's where I want to travel. Bikini Bottom. I want to travel to the Krusty Krab specifically. Oh, that'd be great. That would be They great. had one at uh, Comic-Con. They had a what? full-on like, Krusty Krab Did pop-up. they give you burgers? I didn't go. Okay. I get really anxious at places like Comic-Con, so I usually make a beeline to a few specific booths and mm-hmm. try to like stick to the outskirts. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I'll see something like, oh, from a distance, that's cool, but there ain't no way I'm waiting in line mm-hmm. to just look at a SpongeBob thing. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. But. You know what they should do at, at uh, uh, Comic-Con and stuff? You should be able to rent a cherry picker and just go through the floor. They got tall ceilings. You should just be able to look really wealthy and like effectively a ride a giraffe. Yeah, mm-hmm. one of those. And you're just yeah, you cool. just get a roll and get this really nice angle at everything. Or, or. Uh, well, because you'd be rolling people over, so that wouldn't be yeah, yeah, yeah. That wouldn't be acceptable. Those are general stop in the middle people, of the aisle like but, they always do. Yeah. <laughs> what if you had a cable system <gasps> and zip you were lines. yeah you were zip line you were like rigged up to this cable system and you then like kind of just hovered over everyone. Wow. I feel like the line would be overtaken by people in Superman outfits. You know, and you would have to have a weight limit, and that would upset a lot of people there. This is just for us. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry, where is the um, influencer zip line? <laughs> yeah. That's which is the <laughs> worst oh sentence God. anyone's ever That's said. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Hi, sorry, the VIP uh, trebuchet. <laughs> Can you yeet me to the other side of this? <laughs> That'd be great. Thank I would you. love that. That'd be crazy. Human canon. I would for sure watch an influencer get trebucheted across a- Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Football yeah. Football field size. Wow. Auditorium. Whatever. Yeah, that'd be pretty dope. 
I volunteer Trisha Paytas. I volunteer Trisha Paytas. I don't know. I can't think of anybody. <laughs> That's so funny. I feel like you could put any YouTuber in there and it would work. Anyone with more than 2 million subscribers, and I think it's a punchline. Yeah. Hey, I in the writer's start... room, I'm pitching everyone with more than 2 million subscribers. I want us to start writing scripts like Mad Libs, like we have a joke about it. some influencer blank gets shot across the room and we're like, mm-hmm. who could it be? Like, And we all just go through and we're like, all right, so mm-hmm. Shane Dawson mm-hmm. got launched across with a cannon into a pile of feathers <laughs> what did you guys get like yeah. yeah the lights went out when they came back on i saw mm, russell brand <laughs> next to mm, another youtuber do you know what what do you do you, the, you know what the, 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 the dobry brothers sure. who are those two brothers that don't it, i know a lot of those there's the Unfortunately, Dobrik? there's four of them. You miss. Yeah. You're they multiplied. Yeah. Uh, YouTubers pop up and and go in and out of fashion so quick. I don't know about in and out of fashion, but there was that girl who lived in the van. Who She's got still really, in. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's a matter of like you know. It is such an ever changing landscape, but it's a matter of like respecting it. Like some people are going to be like flash in the pan, but for the time that they're around, they still matter. They still have an audience that cares about them. So it's sort of like recognizing that and just being like, all right, you know, it's still part of the community and, Mm -hmm. you know, so, and just hop, getting with the times, man. I I recognize they matter. I recognize their influence. I recognize their value. I just can't recognize their name if it was on a list in front of me without a photo. It is quick. It is quick. It's just what it gets. It gets harder every year. Just be, I, like I, yeah. to, to know like the people that are coming to VidCon because it used to be such a small community and it's like oh yeah I know like everybody that's coming and now and now obviously it's it's bigger than just YouTube it's mm-hmm. you know TikTok mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Facebook and Twitter. Oh my God! And... Did you guys you guys hear that that the U.S. government is going after TikTok for what? You hear that? Oh, no. oh my God! The U.S. government it was on the news and for me whenever it's on the news and my grandma's watching it I know that everyone over like forty five that has a child just understood what was happening mm-hmm. um, and I don't even know if she was on Fox or something but apparently the Trump administration is going after TikTok because they could be tracking all your movements and stuff because it's a Chinese company oh, and this and whole anti China thing. Well, yeah, that too, yeah. but they're, they're actually collecting data in the same way that everything else collects data and then it's sold and blah, 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 blah. But they're afraid that technically everyone that has it and children, not that they could put content on it, but I guess they could use the positional data of like <laughs> military people that are like on base like, and using it appears TikTok that, and stuff like it that. It appears that a lot of people are moving like this. Yeah. No, I think really, I think really what they're afraid of is like military uh, personnel using TikTok and then out. them knowing oh, they know what's exactly going on. Where I've they been are. using TikTok yeah. for like two or three but months I don't know. now. Yeah, Apps but I don't know how out. real it is because also like six months ago, they were like, don't buy any of these computers. I think it was like yeah. Lenovo or something because they have a Chinese chip. But the issue is, is it's like, great, you're only warning me with Someone else is doing it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. dick. True. Yeah. Tell me when you're doing it, and we can all work together and keep my information out, safe. That freaks me out. I also yeah. had like a, a credit card breach thing happen recently, yeah. so now I'm like super like, who's got my what? Yeah. So it's crazy. Mm. You yeah. could be assured that the American government definitely doesn't have any of your information. So mm-hmm. don't worry. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Don't be worried about any of your information. Look, being... it took me a week and a half to get a new credit card. <laughs> Life was really hard, <laughs> and there's only before the incident and after the incident now. Old Damien's dead. Oh, no. My my credit union, you can print them there, but they print them without raised numbers, and it was so weird That's, when I, I have it. I have that now. Yeah. yeah. It was so strange. Someone tried to take one of those pressings because their credit card machine was down. I'm like, wow. you can't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's flat. And yeah. I didn't know if it's because they printed it right there or if it's the new thing. That's mm-hmm. so. That's true. That's mm-hmm. crazy. No one, No one at Pizza Hut or anything can quickly... Yeah. I don't know. I don't think anyone's doing that. Are people really doing that? Well, someone's, uh, this doctor's office I go to, their credit card machine was down. So they there is an actual machine where they take a pressing of your card to wow. charge it later. That's yeah. a real thing. And But they couldn't do it. So I was like, let me give you my debit card. And, mm. yeah. like, do you I'm take scared Apple of credit pay? cards. They're all freaky. Yeah, they're like small and they're like a rectangle of f- rectangles. Oh you God. know what's amazing? Hexagons. Oh <laughs> my God. Someone could... <laughs> Can we make a hexagon shaped credit card Can guys you cast a thousand wow. hexagons together so it, my credit card doesn't pop yeah exactly <laughs> like no I no might... no so the card reader doesn't get pregnant with that's my true. bank account information mm-hmm. that's right and start printing out my money mm-hmm. yes that's how it works mm-hmm. so guys i think the big takeaway here is um there's a lot of options out there for condoms <laughs> do your research <laughs> I'm, I'm so a, sorry i'm a november big... is not a fun month oh <laughs> i guess people don't people don't need to buy condoms in november right 
because it's it's no, no 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 shave November. Oh, it's not no nut November. Is it? I Why mean, is November not... the month of restriction? <laughs> when did this happen? That well, if you're Puritan, I, I mean, it's, it's every a, month. Nobody actually, nobody actually does no no no. I think I think people under eighteen do it. I think that's the only people. I, I feel like those are the only people worrying about stuff like that. <laughs> Everyone who's like an adult can have – mostly can have an open conversation about things as long as you're not like in a business meeting. It's normally I do fine. feel like once you become an adult, all those like, oh, you have tos go away. If yeah. It's like you're not wearing green on St. Patrick's Day. That's correct. Like, I'm going to pinch you. If you pinch me, I'm going to slap you. Yeah. Don't touch pinch me. Pinch me in like your it's, suit it's, technically. Yeah, it's, I can get yeah. you fired. Don't do um, that. Adult use, use a condom. Life. Use a condom. Yeah. I don't or care. Don't. I don't care. Like if, if you say – just to get over it. Seriously. Just wear a condom at all times. All just hey, in times. Case. You don't know what's going to happen. I think there needs to be a devil's advocate here. Does there, Noah? Does As there? devil's you... advocate, I would say don't, don't. Um, Support the latex Choose industry. your words wisely, Noah. Uh, yeah. The oil industry is ta- has taken over our planet. You should use beet condoms. <laughs> Is that a uh, Beats by Dre's condom? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's it plays, four hundred dollars. It plays yeah. a it plays a thirty second track of, <laughs> yeah, of uh, Chronic. <laughs> do, you, do you remember Hit Clips? Well, you I got, do remember Hit Clips. I think it, that was that was before, before your time. me. Yeah, is that like when you used to pay for ringtones? Sorry, I know mm, we're like no. tang- tangenting way hard here, but but there was a thing back in the day <laughs> mm-hmm. where it was a thing called Hit Clips, and it was this little tiny like device you can carry on you like a keychain. And you could switch out these cartridges, and it would play 30 seconds of a pop song. What? You know, like an iTunes sample. The best part of that? And you would pay- Like $10. Real for money for this, and it was not cheap, no. and everyone wanted it. Because it was like an pick, MP3 player. Could you pick which section of the song? No. No. That's so fun. It literally that's gave you, what's fun. It literally gave you a chorus. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you- well, like I wanted $5. them just to put the bridge- like just when the yeah. song's changing, just like it's, where it's like no one can recognize what song it well, is. It's just the beginning. Guys, you know this song, and it's like uh, uh, amazing. It's just the beginning of Darude Sandstorm. So yeah. it's like just right when it hits. <laughs> oh, that would be and it just horrible. Oh my god, that's just funny. the build up and no drop. Oh yeah, my god. blue balls. Well, guys, this has been um, a totally unexpected and completely derailed podcast. Travel cast. Wow. I really enjoyed talking about all the places that I wanted to go to. Thank you guys so much for that opportunity. But we'll, we'll come back and we'll do, we'll do a real one sometime because I, I, I think it's good. Like, yeah. I want to encourage people to travel and, totally. and see the world mm-hmm. and experience new things, new people, and eat lots of bomb food. Mm-hmm. So, um, guys, Noah, Damien, Thank you guys so much for coming on this week. I had a great time. Thank you guys for listening or watching us. Smoshcast comes out every Wednesday on any of your favorite podcast apps. And the highlight comes out on Wednesday on YouTube. The full video podcast comes out Friday. And um, my favorite coffee, it's, oh man, it's so freaking good, dude. And uh, I'm really enjoying all the responses that you guys have been sending me. You guys are trying the coffee. You guys are loving it. Yeah, someone Keep stopped me at Disneyland just to be like, I got the coffee. I like it. I was like, cool, awesome. Man. I'll tell you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. See, that yeah. that's so cool, man. It is good coffee. I freaking love it, man. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Mm.